Hello and welcome to IABM TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Boster, President at Clearcom. Bob, welcome to IABM TV. Thanks a lot, Ben. So, Bob, how is Clearcom responding and evolving to address the current situation with COVID-19? Well, I think like all businesses, uh, we've had to go through a lot of uh, process changes to make sure that we're keeping our team safe. Uh, as, a, as a manufacturer who actually does our own in-house manufacturing at our facility in, in Southern California, we've had to make a lot of changes to make sure that our, our plant and the workers in it are safe and allowed and able to continue to, to uh, operate, uh, producing new product uh, to meet customers' demands, especially in this um, urgent time is, is very important, um, as well as being able to keep up and maintain our service capability, which we do from a, a couple of different uh, locations. So we've sent everyone home who can go home. Um, as we are starting to see things open up a little bit at a couple of our facilities, we're making plans to uh, safely bring a few more people back into our facilities. But um, generally, we've got a very decentralized organization like most people and then very strict uh, protocols like uh, taking temperatures as people come into the facility, maintaining social distancing, um, very robust cleaning schedule, especially for the two shifts in our factory. Um, so we have a, a lot of a lot of steps in place to make sure that the people who are going in and need to go into the facility are doing so safely. That's really been our focus, and I think we've done a, a very solid job on that. Uh, to date, we haven't had uh, anyone come down ill um, at any of the locations where we still have staff coming in. Excellent. That's good to hear. So, Bob, what trends have you seen emerge in broadcast? Is this something where we're seeing completely new workflows or simply bumping up the speed of adoption for workflows that were already being considered? I think a little bit of both. I think some customers in the broadcast space have been uh, driven to consider uh, ways of operating that they, let's say, they knew were possible but hadn't necessarily implemented. On our side, our portfolio of, of IP uh, tools was really very sophisticated and had a lot of uh, capacity for remote uh, operation even over the internet, uh, which has really uh, been a lifesaver for a number of people who've, been, who've needed to put um, staff into working remotely. One area we didn't anticipate that I think has been quite interesting, we've seen this uh, and, and, and there's a couple case studies on our website about it, um, one at a French broadcaster, another from one in the US, where people have actually used our capacity uh, for sending uh, audio over IP to their intercom system, um, because it has additional audio channels in it, they're actually mixing live from home. So we've seen um, audio professionals set up and, and maintain and, and mix uh, live broadcasting from their home uh, setup uh, using our channel as the sort of the conduit, our auxiliary channel, if you like, as the conduit for their um, being able to monitor their air feed, which has been a really exciting development to see people take advantage of that. It's very creative and um, something that we didn't necessarily anticipate when we put auxiliary audio paths into the product, but uh, it's, a, it's exciting use of that, of that capability. Yeah, it's interesting, I think, how people are adapting to the current situation. Um, alongside that, have you had any other unique customer requests come through during this time, or have you found ClearCom solutions being considered for new markets and applications? Sure. So uh, I think as a lot of people would understand, and we've done a little bit of uh, communication about this to our community in terms of what some of these workflows are, uh, we have communication solutions that can be used in different applications that address uh, the virus, whether those be medical, testing, um, emergency operations based or otherwise. Uh, we've had a handful of uh, pilot projects uh, around the world in different countries to try um, to provide really ad hoc communication solutions for people. Those have worked well. Um, and uh, we're looking into uh, expanding on those. It's a, a little bit premature because I think most people are in the, uh, I just need a solution today, maybe I'll be shopping someday down the road kind of mode, um, which makes it a little bit hard to understand you know, what's going on. But in, on a sort of test and trial basis, I think we've done some good work so far. Um, communications is critical. And I think there's sort of, if you think about it, there's two different major new opportunities, one of which is uh, communications within the, um, the clinical environment uh, so that people can stay outside of 
infected areas uh, maybe not have to change their PPE as many times because they're able to talk to people in, in the treatment room um, without necessarily having to suit up and suit down every time they go in and out of a, of a patient's space. Uh, the other is um, maintaining social distancing. And so having a very broad portfolio of wireless intercom solutions, really the broadest of any of the manufacturers, uh, we have seen people coming to us saying, hey, I, I have people now who need to talk to each other who used to be able to walk up to each other to talk. Now they have to separate themselves a little bit to, um, to maintain social distancing. And, and we can facilitate that, obviously, quite easily with wireless intercom. That's really interesting because you wouldn't have thought about those kind of use cases, would you really? You know, like people having to not change out of the PPE so often. And that must be a massive help to them not having to do that. You know, even just once not having to do it must really Absolutely. help them. Yeah, okay, and, so to do so, and to do so without having to put wiring in or change around the infrastructure in the facility, having an IP platform that allows them to very simply uh, just drop in an additional audio communication path is, is quite, quite helpful. Mm. Yeah, that's great. So, so do you have any other new products or product updates that you can share with us, Bob? Sure. Well, we're in the, we're in the um, release cycle of the product that we sh uh, introduced last year at the IBC. Uh, called FreeSpeak Edge, which is a new wireless product and uh, wireless intercom in the five gigahertz wireless domain. Uh, we've been doing a lot of field testing and, and the sort of final, uh, final pieces of work to bring that to the marketplace. And uh, we'll see that released this summer. Very excited to, to offer some new frequency space. There's also a bunch of features to it, but let's say the, bit, the most Im two important are that it's the highest quality audio performance of any wireless intercom and the sort of modern digital um, intercoms that we have. It's also uh, in a new frequency area which is not cluttered up with other wireless activity. So um, this will be a, an important uh, development for people. Uh, we've got a few other uh, smaller things going on. We've got a new headset coming out that I think will be exciting for people. Um, it's a it's sort of in a form factor and a, and a, a price point and way of operating that I think will be relevant for people wanting to do one headset per person, which we're seeing a lot of that uh, unfolding. And then uh, the last thing is a new release of our Eclipse software. Uh, version 12 of our Eclipse software supports SMPTE 211030, which is uh, sort of the uh, professional packaging of AES67 to allow us to interact with other um, IP audio sources. Um, this is uh, an important let's see, building block in the whole toolkit of IP uh, capabilities. And because it's inside Eclipse, which is a full, fully featured and mature solution that has all these other capabilities, including remote, all the remote um, operations that we were just talking about, it's uh, really sort of taking that product into the next level of operation for, for interoperating with other IP um, audio platforms and frankly, IP audio and video platforms because a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, SMPTE 2110 uh, development is around video and audio that goes with video. Mm -hmm. And so, Bob, finally, how do you see the industry finding new ways to communicate and network over the next six to nine months, given that many trade shows have been either cancelled or postponed? I think it's going to be an interesting process, Ben. I think uh, people are finding their way. Right. I think the critical thing is to service customers with the information that they need and um, making sure to do so in a way that understands that they're operating in a different way than they did before. If trade shows are not the right way, perhaps it's a webinar, perhaps it's uh, sending, making um, material available to people over video so that they can take in their own um, information that they need on their own schedule. Um, there's just a, going to be a variety of tools, and I think that, that uh, as there were a variety of tools before, I think it's just going to be the weight is going to be placed on different feet. So uh, that's my, I guess that's the main piece. I think the other piece is um, helping solve problems for people. You know, historically, a, I think an effective sales force was a sales force that uh, came with expertise, capability, and understanding of the requirements of their customers so that uh, you could be expert for them. I think in the, as we are in a time of even greater degree of pressure on everyone to address certain kinds of um, needs and, and projects under 
let's say, unusual circumstances, that level of expertise is going to be even more critical. So uh, I think we have an, an unbelievable sales organization that has a lot of understanding of the needs of our, of our customers and is able to, to help them piece those solutions together uh, very effectively. And I think that will serve us well. And I, I, you know, I encourage other manufacturers to look towards their people power to try to pull us through this time of, of um, let's say, at least disruption uh, that we're go that we have going on with the pro with the COVID nineteen situation for sure. Okay, well, Bob, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. You can find out more about everything we've discussed with Bob today at clearcom.com. <laughs>